Well, I think there was a realization in UN Women, which, which as you know, is the first uh, integrated global advocate, knowledge hub, and a program driver on the ground for gender equality and women's empowerment uh, and norm setter and standard setter for UN women this was a realization that unless we get key game changers in society to be part of the gender equality project for humanity, we will not be able to achieve uh, our goals and achieve it fast. Because first of all, gender equality is a psychosocial project as much as it, it is a political project, an economic project and a social project. So in order to change the mindsets of people, you had to have certain partners who must stand up for gender equality, who must advocate it, and who must drive a people's movement around it. And that is the genesis of the he for she movement, because men and boys are at the heart of the transformation for gender equality and women's empowerment after, of course, women and girls themselves. So that was the idea behind this launching this movement. And in September 2014, in, uh, the, at, at UN headquarters, uh, if you remember, uh, there is this uh, really historic video uh, that is on, on uh, um, the web, website as well as on YouTube of Emma Watson, the British actress who in her famous uh, launch speech of he for she as a young woman, uh, she called upon all men and boys to support gender equality and women's empowerment, become a champion and are a driver people's movement and she said famously uh, if not now when if not me who and that's the question men and boys were asked and that's the question that 1.3 billion men and boys who's, who have so far signed up for this have answered Oh, it was a, a real high point in the he for she movement when uh, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon uh, and I had the privilege of accompanying him, he came for the vibrant Gujarat uh, event uh, and we were in um, uh, Gujarat at that time and uh, we, uh, he asked to see him and we met him, uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi. And I remember, um, you know, discussing this with his, uh, um, with his office about uh, Secretary General wanting to enlist him and to mark him as a champion for gender equality and as a he for she, um, because he has, from the beginning, uh, center stage women in development of India. So um, we were very pleased that his office confirmed to us that he will agree to do that. And um, I remember that UN Women Office then locally got uh, both in English and Hindi stoles embroidered uh, to say, and I think you can show the pictures of that time, to say uh, Nari ke liye nar, and then he for she, you know. So we got those stoles made, and I had the privilege of wrapping those stoles 
around both the Secretary General and Prime Minister Modi to announce this partnership in gender equality and his championship and his commitment to championship of gender equality as a he for she. Well, our, our um, uh, he for she unit had been looking at philatelic partnerships uh, because you know stamps are a very special way of commemorating people and the great projects and ideas for humanity in my view and uh, when uh, one of my uh, very uh, bright uh, colleagues came up with this idea um, Elizabeth uh, who's been leading this uh, campaign uh, who has been behind some of these ideas of uh, he for she when she came and she said you know we want to do this dance so then we got together the concept we contacted UPA the United Nations uh, Postal Union UPU and India Post was very willing and, and supportive and we got together so I mean it came together the universe came together to produce this um, uh, you know wonderful stamp the design we had two three designs in mind and among the three partners we finally came to the design which you now have and I hope you will show your um, viewers uh, that that stamp uh, and, and for me, the idea was to reflect the Ardhanarishwar roop. You know, because a man standing up for a woman's rights is really symbolized in the Ardhanarishwar roop. So that's what the stamp is also showing. Of course, this is, you know, India Post has its own uh, inputs and the UN, uh, UNU, uh, uh, UPU had its own inputs uh, and it was a collective uh, design. But I'm say, saying interpretation in my mind in, in choosing that design was to really recreate uh, the, the, the concept, uh, the very uh, you, you know, unique and uh, deep concept of uh, Ardhanarish. Oh, it's a very important tool because, um, uh, of course, in the internet age and in the in, in the age of e emails, some of these things are not as uh, in your face and don't get as many eyeballs as they used to because people don't as much put a stamp on an on a envelope and send messages or letters anymore as much as they used to. But uh, stamps are still issued and they are still used and they are of course uh, a stamp collector's uh, paradise, you know. I mean that's where uh, philatelic, uh, there's a whole culture uh, behind philately and um, this is uh, certainly a way of marking history if you look at stamps they tell you a story and and a history of a country of of uh, of course in this case the un's uh, history of un's collaboration with a country like india Oh, I think the campaign was very well received. It resonated so much with young people that uh, we were, uh, in fact, uh, pushing for ever more people joining up. And I want to tell you something, that uh, young men led this campaign. People like, uh, you know, uh, Saket Mani, we had Akash Shah, a whole lot of young people who went out into schools, colleges, took out bicycle rallies, 
um, they uh, did outreach even in villages and all of these commitments were in writing they were not on online to begin with uh, so we any started online commitments subsequently you know they were transferred on to online subsequently so we were able to cap get 1.5 million people to sign on and also the message that sent that that was sent through this the very fact that people came forward or were mobilized i think that became a in itself a transformation well i think um, my greatest uh, you know i think the greatest gain from my particular my perspective was to go around the world and i must have uh, met many many heads of state mayors uh, heads of states within countries uh, provinces i mean and every time i have used the he for she card to get them to uh, become champions of gender equality change policies change discriminatory policies adopt pro women policies and laws and this has been the wonderful aspect of advocacy and movement building because men you know we we started getting requests from heads heads of state can you please you know our, our head of state would like to be a he for she so it became a kind of badge of honor and in order for them to become a bad uh, you know someone who deserves that badge of honor they had to do certain things so we have this 10 plus 10 plus 10 compact for example uh, where we got heads of state 10 heads of state 10 heads of companies and 10 heads of universities who came forward and made extraordinary commitments to gender equality so these are the kind of things then you know they went to various universities who declared that they will you know drive campaigns on this so this became a people's movement as i said we now have 1.3 billion un women has uh, uh, you know who have signed up now online uh, to this and then there is a cascading level of commitment it's not only one time signing but you have to keep you know feeding this and uh, this whole narrative and to say what have i done to show that i am a he for she what have i changed in my family what have i changed in my community or in my workplace or in uh, in in uh, if i am a policy maker what have i changed you know so it is it is this kind of uh, um Uh, shall i say a universe that you create for gender equality 